So now we are going to talk about side missions, open world, and combat. Which leads me to question 4. What side activities do you like to see in an Assassin's Creed game and in the open world? And do you think it's important there's a variety in those when compared to the main story missions? Uh, yes. Yes. And I think... I don't know, I, I think Origins is looking pretty good in that respect. I like side missions that have a lot of narrative content, and certainly that seems to be the case for Origins, and then I think if it's not directly relating to their character, it should be kind of like different gameplay-wise and just be something nice and different, and so you know you have like stargazing puzzles you can do in Origins and stuff that looks like perfect, in my opinion. What I don't like is just what Unity did, which was, here's a whole bunch of icons on a map, and why don't you go to every single one of these and start picking them up Yeah. for no reason. I like, mean, that's, to me, is the pinnacle of <laughs> the worst they could thing they could do for side, mission, side stuff in an Assassin's Creed game. Like, I hope we never go back to that. We kind of talked about it during uh, question one, um, but that's it. Also, just, um, I wanted to bring this up with what I said with Watch Dogs 2 and Variety. Because there's yep. because the the main operations and side operations, those were really just words. Yeah, one led you to take down one was like leading up to taking down Bloom and exposing them. Um, and the other thing was really just, oh, we found this piece of data, the police are are, are using this to do that and that and they're they're actually criminals. Oh, uh, why don't you go check it out? Um it just didn't really felt feel like it had a purpose. Um and that it was really it just the same and then um, the, yeah then there were some collectibles here and there and there were like photos to take and uh, there was a big world to explore but then that was really it um that's really it in Watch Dogs 2 and I just think Assassin's Creed Syndicate um not only does London feel like so alive but you know there's just a big variety too like if you want to do races and stuff you can do you know you can do that you want to do some fight clubbing you can do that and hell then there's like the conquest missions which i think are super fun you can do that which is which feels you know more mission based and then of course there's the london stories if you're really into that like mission formula which really you know uh goes on the same formula as like the main story missions more or less right um so there was a big variety and i think um also in black flag it was lovely there you know, there were like collectibles, um, the Mayan stellies, you know, puzzles, the Animus fragments, and there was like the Templar hunts, like uh, for the mission mission type, just without the constraints, you know, the optional objectives. And that's where I think Syndicate really, really made it awesome that even in the Conquest and London stories, there are optional objectives to give it that sense of this is like a real mission and not just some side mission that's really yeah. just there. Um, and um, and also, I, I wanted to talk about like the random events, like the the crowd events. Um, what do you think about those? Oh, I don't. Crowd events. Uh, are you talking about like in Unity, where it's like, oh, oh this lady had her purse stolen. Why don't yeah, you go Unity catch it? Syndicate. Like, no, she I... stole my purse. Go catch it, and then you get like yeah, hundred yeah, yeah. pounds, and then you can complete a set like forty, forty-five. It just increases by five, and then you get like a five thousand reward. Yeah, um, no, I think it's really fucking stupid. I. Yeah. Really, it's like um, ever since every ever since AC three, I remember it was like in the Game Informer coverage for that they were talking about like oh wow and like all these systemic like crowd interactions like random events like pop up like one lady got like like an apple stolen by a thief as we were walking down the road and then in reality it just turns into this repetitive like simplistic bullshit that has absolutely yeah. no like exciting or interesting things going on at all and so like unless they're actually going to uh, unless they actually put a huge amount of work into making things actually dynamic and interesting and unique and um, in a way that was really well integrated into the world, I'm always just, anytime I hear anything promising something like that, ever since AC3, I just kind of roll my eyes and just don't pay attention to it. <laughs> I know what you mean. Um, like, um... It just feel, felt repetitive, and I'd love if there was actually more to it, I guess. Um, that's it, in, um, in GTA V, there was like, sort of the same concept, they were called like random events, um, which uh, they only appeared once, typically, 
and there were like 60 of them throughout the map, but that was like, um, you know, bigger and it felt, it had more to it. For example, there was one where you were just walking around and suddenly you see like two mafia guys trying to bury the daughter of the rival daughters or the rival boss's daughter alive. And then, you know, you can use to help uh, kill those guys and take her home. And then you'll get a call like, oh, $60,000 has, has been deposited into your bank account for, uh, for my dad as, as thanks. Um, um, that could definitely be great. Like we, we get more, um, we get bigger events if we are to get these crowd, random crowd events. Yeah, Rather maybe. Than, I, yeah. I, I just would need to be convinced that they're actually going to put some effort into them to, yeah. to actually make them interesting. Yeah. And it, I mean, up until now, I haven't seen any indication of that, so I just ignore it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, really the random event, or the crowd events, were really just a little way to get money, in, in my opinion. Uh, nothing else. Yeah. It, yeah if you, if you no, no, it's just... Short, if it's just a little nice way to get, get some bonus cash. Also, in the beginning of the game, it's, it's maybe a nice way to uh, build up your economy. Um, I, I would not have missed anything if they had cut them out uh, completely. No problem. <laughs> I don't think it would anything of value would have been lost. But I will say <laughs> that's my opinion. Yeah, but I will say these small events—they don't have to be the crowd events, but anything that kind of makes the world feel alive is definitely great. And I think we'll definitely see that more of that in Origins in a bigger, more interesting way. Maybe, but Maybe. I mean, events like you, the ones that we're talking about in Unity and Syndicate didn't. For me, anyway, it did not make the world feel more alive. It felt, it made it feel more like a video game because it was the exact same thing, the exact same simplistic yeah. thing happening yeah. over and over. And the fact that you, they even keep track of it and being like, "Oh, now just do this a hundred more times," like is just it actually <laughs> it actively makes the world less immersive to me. Or 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 the same crimes were just committed all over London all the time. I mean, helping. yeah, I except it's the exact that. same the two or three ladies who get robbed days. every time <laughs> in the exact same way. <laughs> like, it's, it just actively, that's why I say, like, I think they would have been better off just completely just removing those, because in my opinion, it just actively makes it worse. Absolutely. I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah. But um, but just kind of to lay that to rest and just focus on like the the mission stuff itself, like you know the things that actually mean something to you, gain like 100% synchronization. You know there I definitely want like collectibles, missions or, or like missions that have like a story type mission structure, and um, I want some sort of like um, of, of um, stealth activities, kind of like uh, you can call the uh, the game strongholds, uh, the conquest activities. And, um, what else is there? That's mainly what I want. Like, I want, you know, collectibles, side missions, and, and conquests. That's mainly what I want. Um, yeah. for, like, for, like, side missions. And you do those, and you get 100% sync. Um, but that's important. I think, I haven't, like, 100% synced. The only one I've actually, like, fully 100% synced is the Jack the Ripper DLC, and I did that recently. Um, mm. I think it's important too that there's still something to do after that because my feeling is that the game feels empty like there's nothing to do there's just running around repeating the same races and fight clubs uh, and crowd events and replaying missions but that's it where's the fun in that you you can follow me yeah yeah it's super important, I don't know about you, but I personally feel like it's important that there might be some missions that, you know, there are there, and you know, you might get like an achievement trophy for them, but they're not required for 100% sync, so you can do them now, or you can save them till you've done the 100% sync, so you can still do something after that. That might just be me, but I think that's important. That not Sounds only is there like a variety, but the game needs to always feel like there's something for as long as possible. Um, yeah. So yeah. Now, do you have anything to add to this, or uh, shall we skip to question five? No, I think it's right. pretty much it on my end. All right. 
How do you like the idea of a combat system where a sound system, meaning the sound a weapon makes, plays a major role in terms of stealth and full-on man-to-man combat? If there's anything you don't understand, feel free to ask. Yeah, you might need to clarify yeah. this one for me what a little bit. What I'm thinking bit. about is that, um, is that, let's say, you know, let's we have a sword here. You know, um, there's always sword, you know, it, it deals more damage. But it maybe uh, take longer to swing and uh, stuff like that. That it maybe it's stronger, but in terms of like swinging it, it, it's slower. So your enemy might have the advantage. Let's say there's this sword that really you know is super strong. All right, let's say like this. You uh, there's a heavily guarded fortress, and you know if you get spotted here, you know it won't be easy to make it out of there. Kind of like uh, the um, the palace Ezio flew to in Assassin's Creed 2, the most guarded building in Venezia. Um, and this sound, you know, there's on the map, there's these small, like, red icons that indicate the sound you make. So, um, you know, this sword might be super strong, but it makes that much more sound, uh, making the risk of other guards hearing you and attacking you bigger. And the reason why I came up with this idea uh, in the first place was because sometimes I think it's a little uh, unrealistic that you know you might be fighting a guard behind you um, you might be fighting a guard and then uh, they they have their backs against you and but they're just standing there like they're hearing nothing and I'm pretty sure um, they would hear that in real life um, do you get it now so you're saying like each weapon makes a certain amount of noise and noise, that noise yeah. can be heard by like other guards yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, so you'll do uh, I don't know. I I'm not uh, I I'm having trouble imagining that working in a way that would feel good to play. And I don't think that like the difference between a sword and a slightly thicker sword, like the difference in sound is really that great to really make a difference I feel like I don't know I, I know what you mean I'm, I'm not I'm not convinced that it's I'm seeing a way that it would be interesting and fun I think absolutely I know what you mean but, but that's just that it you know um, it just what you said like you, you know throughout the games there have been this like oh just because the sword is bigger it, it, it inflicts more damage I'm, I'm not sure I don't know about that but in real life that might not actually matter really just how sharp it is and size of also matters of course um but well, I, I think the stat the stats on different weapons yeah. might not necessarily mean like oh the sword is bigger and so it's more damage yeah. it's i think it, i think stats like that are reflective of just general craftsmanship of the blade and sure sharpness can be a part of that as well and so i don't think it's necessarily just reflecting like size Although, you know, there is kind of a general sense that bigger weapons will be slower but harder hitting than Absolutely. lighter weapons. I mean, and other than that, yeah. They said, you know, in Origins here, they're totally uh, revolutionizing the, um, the, the combat system, making it, you know, much more, I guess, you need to be, like, closer to the player, or closer yeah. to the NPC, that it's, like, actually... It's not like just because you press B to dodge or you press X to attack. It's like you'll uh, be there, uh, you'll be running towards him, and he'll be just standing there. You know, he might actually be dodging when you press X uh, to attack. Yeah. Um, so th this is really, you know, strategic. And I just thought of the idea as like it was mainly just because it, it didn't piss me off, but it was just like um, a bit unrealistic that. Like, five meters away from you, there are two guards standing there, there, just, like, minding their own business, like, not hearing you at all, that you're standing there with the same clink, 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 clink. Um, so I just thought it could be a nice element that if this little red noise um, thing on the radar hits those guards, you know, they'll actually come to you. Um, and, you know, it could be... It could play a major role in, like, uh, planning? Planning your mission strategically. You know, as I said with this example, there's a heavily guarded fortress. If you get detected, you know, it won't be easy. So you might, if you get detected, you might want to pick a sword that doesn't make that much noise just to try not to alert nearby guards. Um, 
and try to, you know, get out of sight as fast as possible. It's just, a, it's just an idea I had. It's, it's probably never going to be implemented into a game, but uh, we, we've definitely seen, maybe you've seen it too in some shooter games, you know, it's uh, in terms of stealth, you know, definitely equip a suppressor to your pistol. Um, right, right. It's suicide. Well, I mean, so, I mean, Assassin's Creed does kind of do this in a sense that um, it's it's not as fine-grained as as each individual weapon, but generally speaking, if you go and assassinate people with the hidden blade, it's quieter and more discreet than if you run up and get in a fight with them. And I think that's the way Assassin's Creed has tried to handle this, you know, throughout the whole series, pretty much. Whereas if you start making a system too complex, like giving each weapon a noise rating, having like this ring of noise follow you around because you move around a lot during combat too and like having to manage that and everything i think i i'm not saying you can do it i'm just having trouble imagining that it would be fun and not just kind of like a feeling like an overly complex system that's kind of been uh, like i would want to as a player want to worry more about just combat and uh the actual fight instead of trying to manage like my noise level at the same time and okay. stuff like that it's mainly just in terms of because i always get so oh when that happens when i'm doing stealthy when i'm going full stealth mode full ninja in a fortress and then suddenly some guard detects me and then i have to fight them and then the whole thing is compromised it's um it's just it would mainly be in terms of stealth that this uh, noise system plays a role uh, you know in full out you know open conflict it doesn't matter because there it's just about you making it out alive right um so yeah now do you have anything else you'd like to discuss in, in terms of combat now that we're here um uh no i right. not really it'll be interesting to see how origins turns out but absolutely i'm looking forward to it absolutely and um and just maybe just in terms of um just to uh, wrap it up like in um, I, I definitely also want to see in games um, a big variety, a variety of weapons too. That you know, all depending on what. That's kind of what we saw in Unity. You know, all depending on what type of guy you are. We've always kind of seen that, really. I guess. Like if you're more like smashing axe guy or a sword guy, you know, it's up to you. That's awesome. 